Okay, now the ERDL model, the general form in a bivariate framework, so we're using just two variables in order not to complicate too much the notation, can be structured as the following. So we got the present value of the variable of interest, in the dependent variable, y. We got the past value of the dependent variable given by the first lag. We got the second lag of the dependent variable and we got up to p lags, right? p lags of the dependent variable. Then we can include the contemporaneous effect on the explanatory variable, the past, the first uh, past value of the explanatory variable x, the second lag, and to the q lag of the explanatory variable, yes? So this representation can be done as we have written down there with the sums, yes? So in this case, we got that the dependent variable in the present time is explained by a constant term given by C and the summatory from J to one to rho to P lags, excuse me. Notice that it is one right here, while in the lags of the, of the dependent variable is zero, right? Because in this summatory, if you put a zero from J up to P lags, then you will also include the present value yeah. of the variable. Yeah. So it is nonsense to do that because the variable will be explained by himself. So there's no need. So it's nonsense. <laughs> so just start with the first value always in the autoregressive structure. But you can start with the contemporaneous effects on the explanatory variable given in XT, right? Now, this is the original ERDL approach and the parameters C, which is the constant term, P, which is right here associated to the past values of the dependent variable, and theta, which is associated to the x variable. These are the parameters which are estimated by the regression, and it is usually estimated with ordinary list of squares estimator, right? So when we are estimating this model, the autoregressive model with the OLS, then B right here should satisfy all of the ordinary list of squares assumption, right? That includes no autocorrelation, that includes no heteroselasticity, that includes functional form, and so on, and so on, right? But something over time that I have been observing of the use of these models because I have I have given advice in in bachelor and master thesis and doctoral thesis is that these models are pretty flexible. When you include enough information of the explanatory variable and enough information of the dependent variable, then these problems would usually be fixed. 